Okay, we're here today in our small boat shop. We're gonna work on laminating up some uh, strips of fur to make the uh, four keel for the nutshell pram. We're working on the seven foot, seven inch version. And um, got the strips cut. They're one eighth inch thick and about one inch wide. And all that'll be uh, shaped down when we're done. We'll end up with about three quarter inches of uh, width and uh, just, and then we'll cut the laminate to match the shape of the four keel itself. So there'll be a lot extra in some places and not so much extra in other places. We'll show you what, how, what we mean here in just a minute, but we're gonna laminate it or glue it up together with this uh, using thick sew today. We've got a couple of different uh, varieties here that were sent to us by uh, Total Boat at Jamestown Distributors. Got your regular, what's thick sew people ask her. It's a thickened epoxy, it's an adhesive. Comes in a tube that there's uh, two parts. There's a resin and a hardener, and they sell a couple different varieties. One is one I just showed you, just kind of a straight thickened epoxy. And by thickened, they mean there's already a, a filler added in there so you don't have to mix in filler when you can, like you do when you conventionally mix epoxy. Uh, they've also got a flex that's a little bit better in a maybe a lap straight joint or applications like that where you might anticipate a tiny bit of movement in a boat and then they also sell fixo wood which is the same product but it's uh, got wood flour added so it you kind of see some of the brown on the side of it comes out uh, we normally dispense those we use a 25 to 1 ratio uh, caulk gun that's uh, means it handles easier to pull than your basic um, hardware store caulk gun, which are like seven to one or eight to one. So if you gotta put a bunch of this on, your your hand will appreciate it if you buy the uh, gun that's more suitable for this application. And then um, Total Boat also sent us, I'm not sure the official term, but I'll just call it the double gun. And you have, you get about two and a half times more product than is in this one tube because this one tube has both the hardener and the resin and with this uh, system this is a tube of uh, the resin I believe that's thickened you can kind of see its color and then the hardener in this tube over here so if you've got a lot to do uh, then you may want to invest in this gun we used it yesterday it works great and um, got a little bit of an upfront cost to buy the a specific tool and but then you're gonna you won't be changing out these tubes as much because some of them well, this one's full but other tubes in the past we've seen have been not quite as full I'm not sure why that is or which product that was it was like that so it's uh 40 degrees outside out here i'm not exactly sure what the or i'll just say around 50 ish i'll guess how low of a temperature you can go to get that hardener to kick off outdoors, but we kept uh, the tubes inside overnight. And now we brought them out. We just have a little portable heater that's helping to heat the shop and that'll keep those tubes from cooling off too fast uh, so that uh, that, uh, what is it? The, the resin seems to start thickening up and it makes it a little more difficult to get it out of the gun. Well, I'll take you over the top of our uh, sheets of plywood here. This is, this is a five by 10 for another project going inside the house and our plywood for uh, the bottom and the planks and rudders, dagger, board, dagger boards, et cetera, for the sailing version of the nutshell. Spin you around our little, uh, our little table here has been working out great to hold things. So it's a, uh, the bottom part is a, uh, a finishing dolly that we used to put our sunfish on. It's got some articulating bunks. They don't articulate right now because this strong back's sitting on top of them. And then on top of that is a ladder frame we built for a cat boat that we plan to build eventually. And we were looking at it and Skipper said, you know, that might make a good work table. So it has had several projects done on it now. In some cases, the gaps between the uh, 
ladder frames there have uh, been helpful in other places in other times it's been nice to have a piece of board or something over the top of them uh, these particular by ladder frames I mean these uh, boards going crossways here those are set for the uh, cat boat once we build the start putting molds on top what we might do is just you know temporarily tack down a few more every few inches but I wouldn't put them I wouldn't put them butted up against each other I'd leave a gap that way if you wanted to drop a you know clamp down in there and have a clamping surface when you're working on something this one's uh, 16 feet long it's been uh, working out good for these projects today and then what we're going to be getting to today is adding these uh, fur laminations to the jig that we made off of the uh, patterns that came the uh, nut shell pram plans and patterns that we bought from uh, the wooden boat store so we'll talk about we went to the took the pattern it's full size pattern so you don't have to do any drawing or pull out the ruler or anything else all you got to do is trace that onto a in this case a piece of half inch plywood that we chose to use and this is the shape of the keel right here that's going to go in the boat and then we added some little blocks so we'd have a clamping surface surface and they call this a this whole thing a jig so we'll put this laminates on here and clamp them to each one of these on the way uh, to get to that point we're going to take uh, we ended up with about 15 strips of this uh, fur one eighth inch thick and about one inch wide and we cut them longer than they need to be so that we'll have plenty of room off either end we don't accidentally get short and find out we can't make this last little part right here so it's it's going to curve around so we measured the curve come out on the other end and it's going to have extra on the other end so what we're getting ready to do next is put on some uh, gloves so we don't get epoxy all over us and start uh, laying these down one by one and we'll put a bead of epoxy on it we'll take a little paint stick and kind of smooth that out and see that we got good coverage on this side and then we'll take the next one and we'll put epoxy on this side and stick them down together now when you stick these uh, pieces like this together you want to try to put them down as aligned as you can when you first start because if you put it off kind of crooked and then you squeeze it together uh, most adhesives have a memory so when you put it down squeeze it together you walk away you come back and it'll be uh, pulled back out to where you put it eventually so when you start trying to stack 15 of them it can get to be a uh, it can get to be a, a problem with them not staying together. So we'll take all these uh, laminates. So we uh, rip these out on a, a table saw, by the way. If you don't have a table saw, you, you probably need to find a friend who has one to take. Uh, we took a two by four piece of a fur and started cutting uh, a piece that was one inch thick and then, uh, then ripping it. So we got about 15 of them. They'll be and um, adhesive on both faces when we put it together. After you've done a couple, you'll find just the Goldilocks amount of adhesive that just right, and you know, not too much, not too little. Because when you um, put them together and clamp it down and squeeze it, you're gonna see, you hope to see just a tiny bit of epoxy come out of that joint there. If you don't see any, that means there's uh, you didn't get enough epoxy there. If you see tons and tons of it, then you've uh, wasted epoxy that is gonna dry and you won't be able to use it on anything else. So we'll take all 15 of them, we'll get them all, all glued together. We'll lay this piece of poly or plastic over the jig so that we don't glue the laminates for the keel to the jig itself. We'll start on one end Thing just doesn't it just loves that piece of plastic right there doesn't want to come loose <laughs> all right 
Hold on a second, folks. We gotta fix this. It's gonna take two hands. One thing you wanna do, I don't know if I'll show on the cameras. I'm gonna get them all lined up as best you can. And you can imagine there's a bunch of glue on all these. You're gonna take them down and you're gonna look at your jig and see where, how far out they need to go. It needs to go to right about there. You're gonna go a little bit past that. And you wanna clamp this first, uh, a helper is helpful. You wanna clamp this first and you can see I've made a mistake here. I trimmed my uh, jig a little bit and I didn't get quite enough meat underneath it to hold this one edge flat underneath. So I know that now, so. Next time I'll, if I make another one, or just knowing that it's going to be a little bit wiggly, this one edge might try to drop off a little bit. I'll uh, compensate for that when I'm putting it together or have a helper with me. So like I say, you give it a little bit extra and you want to clamp this, this in first. In fact, I think some people even take and drive a screw down through the end. Because if you clamp in the middle, and you think you have enough, but you've left enough, by the time you feather everything around, it, it kind of shifts like that. And you might end up having not quite enough meat there, like you can see the little blue line for the keel. Might not have enough meat when you get done to cut the, uh, the piece to just the right size that you want. Now ask me how I know that. Well, I know that because yesterday when I did the midships frame, I was kind of having a hard time getting started on the end of the jig because once again, I'd cut it too short. So I thought, I thought I'd be smarter than the piece of wood and I'll come down here and I'll, I'll clamp it here first. So I did and then I went and clamped all the way around either side and I did not notice that when I got down here that that piece had feathered. So I may or may not have enough of the piece left on the end for the uh, midships frame that I did. So if that's the case, and I put the pattern back on top of it, it's like, oops, I missed the little top part. I'll find out if that's just kind of a, a decorative curve at the top to finish it off, or if it's like, no, there's gotta be a, a plank or something that's gonna screw in right there. If, if I do end up short, what I'll do is I'll just cut a little piece of angle off of the piece I did made and take another piece of uh, some uh, fur, you know, just a solid piece. I'll make it the right shape and I'll epoxy that on and I'll, I'll fix it with a piece of wood and some, some more epoxy. So we'll see how that turns out, but those are just uh, a few of the learning lessons that we came across yesterday. One other thing was gluing when it was cold, it was probably about 42 in the shed. And even though the epoxy came out to the shed room temperature, I think it cooled off pretty quick. And after I went through two or three of these mixing tubes with the, uh, that it seemed to be getting more difficult to get the product to squeeze through this tube. And all I can assume is that the, uh, the resin was cooling off and it doesn't like to flow as well when it's cooler. I'll check with the uh, total boat people and see if that's uh, an experience they have or what I should have expected. Now this resin and hardener, it's gonna take a while. It needs to be at the recommended temperature to harden in a reasonable amount of time. So once everything was all glued up, we wiped off excess glue and we took it inside, put down a couple of uh, tarps and kept it inside overnight at uh, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And this morning it's uh, the epoxy has actually gone beyond the tack stage. It feels pretty hard. So that's uh, going to finish up real nice. So that's an option you have for you. Or if your garage is a little bit warmer, maybe in the 50s, then you can take it in there. But the colder it is, the longer it's going to take for that uh, thick and epoxy to harden up. So, like I say, the folks at uh, Total Boat sent this to us. They... Nice products, we like using them. And uh, we appreciate getting some free ones to try out. There's the number.
if you want to call Jamestown Distributors and check with them, they also sell all kinds of other products. You got uh, Rust-Oleum, Pettit, Interlux, and best of all, the, you can call and chat with one of their tech reps, or you can email, or you can even chat with them online sometimes if you've got a project and you're not sure what product to use. They have a whole array of uh, solutions to offer you. Uh, one of the pro uh, questions that comes up the most is people wanting to use you know, a certain type of paint or a certain type of uh, filler, fairing compound, primer, etc. And they don't know for sure what they have. We usually tell people, if you're going to paint, start with picking out the paint color you like. If you know you want to, one example is we like the Pettit Seafoam Green and then work backwards from your paint color and try to stay in those same line of products. Try to use Pettit Paint with Pettit Primer with Pettit Fairing Compound with Pettit Epoxy. Then you might get in a situation where you find out, well, I can get this paint, but I can't get this type epoxy. You talk to the Jamestown folks and they'll let you know because they build uh, their own little boats and repair boats back in there warehouse so they'll know they'll have a really good idea whether your uh, solutions whether your thoughts on what you want to do whether it's going to work or not or they can give you other recommendations so i really appreciate the fact that they answer the phone you talk to a person if they're busy they call you back you can get uh, questions answered um, throughout a good portion of the week so that's what we're getting ready to do Swing you back around to kind of go full circle. We're going to grab that big caulk gun right there, the double gun. We're going to start buttering up those fur strips and go from there. So let's see. Oh, found the box. So this is a dispensing tool designed for one 300 milliliter it's also convertible. There's a couple of little shims that come with it to, uh, if you have a big tube and a small tube like we have, it holds it in there. 26 to one thrust ratio, that's what you want. You don't want the, the Lowe's or the Home Depot caulk gun. And that way uh, things aren't gonna bend on you and you'll be able to do it, uh, use it for uh, several minutes, an hour or so without your hand getting worn out so uh, get ready to go get all messy find the gloves and start working on the uh, epoxy that'll about do it